Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a quick video on the basics of Adobe Audition for audiobook production. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is Adobe Audition. This is the DAW that I choose to use. DAW, D-A-W, stands for Digital Audio Workstation. And there are a few different DAWs that are used quite a bit in the audio production world, and this is one of them. There are also Audacity, which is free to download and use. And there is also Reaper, which is also a one-time fee kind of a DAW. Adobe Audition is a subscription-based DAW, but it's the one that I prefer, and I recommend it to everyone. Adobe Audition is highly customizable to work with whatever you want it to work with, whether you're editing or matching up audio to video. I mean, there's a lot you can do with Adobe Audition. So to get the layout that I am using, that I use every day, go up to Window and select Workspace. I am using the radio production workspace. So it sort of gives you the layout that you see here. The next thing you want to do is make sure that you enable amplitude statistics, editor, files, level meters, metadata, selection view, tools, and video, and any other, any other panels that you want to enable you can. But these are the ones that I use most often. Now to open a brand new singular file, you would go up to file new audio file. If you want to open a multi-track section, session, meaning that you have multiple tracks, a dialogue track, music, sound effects, you would open a multi-track section. <laughs> you would open a multi-track session. So that way you can mix multiple files together. But more often than not, as a brand new voice artist or audiobook narrator, you're going to be working with a singular file at a time. So select audio file. This window is going to pop up. Make sure that you name it, whatever you want to name it. And I highly recommend that you start organizing your files and getting into the habit of sending files to specific places from the start. You'll save yourself a whole lot of frustration later in going, where did that file save? I can't find it. Oh, God, now I have to re-record it again. I can't, fi I can't find this file that I just recorded. So get into the habit of organizing your files and saving them to appropriate places from the start. Meaning, on your computer's desktop, create a folder for each platform that you're working on. And when I say platform, I mean where you're finding the work. So if you're working with ACX to create audiobooks for Audible, create a folder called ACX. And then within that folder, you can have an individual folder for each client or author you're working with. You could also create a folder on your desktop for Fiverr, another one for Upwork, another one for Voice123, so on and so forth. That way, you're getting into the habit of saving these files to a particular folder in which where you found that work from, right? Get into the habit of organizing these files from the jump. You'll save yourself a whole lot of frustration later. So if you're doing an audition, you want to start the file's name with your name. In this case, my name, underscore the title of the book that you're auditioning for, underscore, and then you could also do audition. You can put in audition. You could spell it right, or underscore ACX or underscore Fiverr, wherever it is that you found the work from, just to further help you identify where that file's supposed to go. <laughs> We're going to leave it at sample rate 48, 4800 and bit depth of 24. Click OK. And here is where you start saving those files to particular places. So hit File again, go to Save As. And we had this one file already highlighted or selected. So this is the one that we're working with. Select the ACX folder or whatever folder it's going to, and then hit OK. 
get into the habit of saving these where they're supposed to go in the beginning. You'll thank me later. All right, to start recording, all you would need to do is hit this red button down here to start recording. So when you click it, it starts recording. To stop recording, you would hit the stop button. This little button down here, this loop playback, is very handy if you want to review a specific section of the audio recording. So if I wanted to go back and listen to just this bit, maybe there's a noise within it that I'm trying to identify. So instead of having to move my playhead back to the beginning and restart the recording manually over and over, if I select this little bit and make sure that this loop playback button is enabled, if I hit the space bar to play, it'll only play that particular piece over and over again. To delete a section, you would select the section that you want to delete. For instance, we could get rid of this little bit of mouth noise here. We can select it and then either hit delete on our keyboard or I can right click the selection and cut it. If I want to reduce this gigantic pause here, I would just select this entire bit of room tone and delete it. Same with this little bit of noise here. I have a little bit of mouth noise going on right here. So what I can do in Adobe Audition is either hit B on my keyboard, or you can come up here and click Spot Healing Brush Tool. Click that, and it turns your cursor into a circle. Now the circle, think of it as an eraser. I can, using my mouse, I'm gonna click and draw, drag it down over the spot that I want to erase out. And I can erase those mouth clicks right out of there. And do it again here. There's a little bit of a click here. So I'm just going to erase those out, erase those out. Looks like there's a little bit of a click here. They look like icicles, mouth noise. So I'm going to just gently erase those out. Spot healing tool brush. One of my best friends, let me tell you. Another handy trick if you have a high noise floor in your space, which as audiobook narrators, noise floor is a definite standard that we need to hit for audiobook production. So if you have a high noise floor, which is all of this noise frequency down here at the bottom, you could either select all of it and go up to effects, noise reduction, restoration, noise reduction process, click that, and make sure that that room, that room noise is highlighted, then select capture noise print. And then we have a digital representation of the frequency of noise. So once we have that noise selected, you can choose to reduce that noise by either a percentage or by decibel amount. I usually go about 30% and about 10 dB. This noise is present, as we can see, i move this out of the way, pretty much through the entire file here. So I'm gonna tell this effect that I want to reduce that frequency of noise from the entire file. So select entire file, and then apply. And as you can see, it reduced it quite a bit. Now, this is where the history, the list of steps that you took already may come in handy. If you want to go back a step, you just click, you just go back to the previous step. You can even go back several steps to redo something. But as soon as you save and close this file, you can no longer go back a step. So however you save the file, the last time you save and close it is how it's going to be returned to you when you pull it back up. So if there's anything you need to change or any steps you need to undo, make sure that you undo those before you save your file because you won't be able to undo them once you save and close it. You might have to re-record the file if there was something that you needed to do or fix. But I wanted to show you that going back a step, this was the previous room tone noise and then after noise reduction, it's still there, it's not completely silent, but we don't want it to be completely silent. We wanna have some ambient noise in the room 
just not as loud as it was before. For those of you that are using plugins with your digital audio workstation for Adobe Audition, once you have chosen the plugins that you want to purchase and download, uh, and a plugin is basically an effect that is not available natively through your DAW of choice for something specific like a mouth declick or a noise reducer or a deplosive, there's an effect that you found that isn't available or maybe that is better than the one that's available in your DAW and you've downloaded it, the way to get it to upload to your DAW so you can use it within your DAW is if you go to the effects tab at the top here and then go to your audio plugin manager. And then all you would have to do is click scan for plugins. And then any plugins that you have purchased and downloaded, they will be available here. So you could click enable all and then okay. And then once the magic is done with the uploading and saving and this process is done, those will be available in your effects rack and they will be listed under either VST or VST3, depending on what kind of plugin it is. So if you, let's just say, for example, if it's a VST3, you would go to either your effects, my waves effects are here, and restoration, my isotope effects are here. So either way, I have access to all the effects that I have purchased, and they work beautifully within Adobe Audition. Now, once you have your effects loaded, and I have a whole other series of videos where I talk about effects specifically and how to save preset racks and all the things, please check out my playlists for those. But once you have your effects done, you can either apply those effects in just a section or in which is where you would select it here, the selection only or the entire file. I like to keep it on selection only. That way it's a little bit easier for me to um, be specific when I'm applying my effects. So if I intentionally select just a piece of it, I know that my effects rack is going to apply to just that piece. But if I don't have anything selected and I click apply, there's nothing selected. So it'll apply to the entire file, if that makes sense. And the reason that you would only want to add an effect to a specific piece of a file is if perhaps you have a crazy character voice. For example, I auditioned for uh, an escape room character the other day where I was the voice of a possessed little girl. So I had a effect on the entire file to make me sound a little bit younger. But then there were pieces of the dialogue that I wanted to sound like I was a possessed creature. <laughs> so I had a whole different set of effects to apply to just specific sections of the dialogue. So that is why that is available and handy to know how to do. And for those of you that record audiobooks, a question I get a lot is how do I get my audio volume leveler down here to show less than ne negative 60? Because I think when you first open Adobe Audition, this is pretty much what it looks like. It only goes to, or no, does it go to 60? I think it only goes to 60. If you right click on your volume leveler, you can tell it what range you want to see. I keep it at uh, 96. That way I can easily see where negative 60 is and then further below it. Another question I get is what is metadata? The metadata is basically where you're going to insert the name of whatever section of the audiobook you're recording. If you're recording audiobooks, this would be chapter one and then the title of that header, right? This is the information that's going to scroll across the screen when the audiobook is played back later. So if you've ever listened to an audiobook and your car, for example, the information about the book that's scrolling across the screen on your infotainment display, right? Chapter one of whatever book it is, that is where it comes from, that metadata. Another effect that you're going to know need to know how to use is your normalization. If you go up to favorites, normalize to negative three is basically going to increase the overall volume of the file to 
not exceed negative three, which is another audiobook standard. One of the last steps that you're going to do is to normalize to negative three. That will help you get to your peak amplitude standard of not exceeding negative three. Another trick for Adobe Audition is if you have some of these peaks here in your waveform that are just too high for maybe you were just a little bit too loud in a, in, in a particular part of your read, all you need to do is select that little bit of the waveform that you want to reduce the volume of. And with this little vol volume widget, you can reduce the volume of just that piece. Or if you right click and select all, you can reduce the volume of the entire file. Another handy feature for Adobe Audition is the selection view down here in the bottom right corner. If you're trying to get to a specific length of room tone and you're selecting here, you can watch down here on the duration bar and see how much of that room tone you have. If you want a second, I'm going to scroll in a little bit. We can slowly move it out until we have a second of room tone and then copy that. Or if I needed to put in maybe a second's worth of pause, perhaps, uh, between these two pieces of dialogue, I could do that. I could select these two and then control V to paste it in, control V to add another second, another second, another second. You can do that. Or if I needed to remove a second of silence, I could just select this whole file. Oops, just a second. <laughs> or if I needed to remove a certain amount of time from this pause here, I could select it until I needed, I could select it until I got to that predetermined amount. And then let's just say it was zoom in to get a little tighter here if it was two seconds or close to, then we could cut that out. Oh, and another thing, and I almost forgot, definitely go into edit, go to your preferences and just pull up autosave. I highly recommend that as a voice actor, audiobook narrator, set your autosave recovery data every two minutes or less. I mean, I think it's preset at like five minutes or 10 minutes, maybe even 20 minutes. But if you set it to every two minutes, if, God forbid, something were to crash, at least it's auto-saving for you every two minutes. So if you forget to save and something happens to the system and at least you have auto, it's been auto-saving for you every two minutes. It's saved me a couple times. If you've noticed that my waveform is red and you opened your Adobe Audition and it was green, you can change these colors if you want to. You can change them to any color you want to. So if green is a little bit boring, you can change yours to red. You can change your playhead, the waveform selection, the background, the foreground. You can change all of these colors. Like I said, it's highly customizable. So I hope that was informative. That gives you a little bit of a short voiceover and audiobook specific tutorial on Adobe Audition. If there's anything else that you want to know about Adobe Audition, or if you have questions about anything else, voiceover or audiobook related, please check out my other playlists. I have hundreds of videos at this point on my other playlists. But if there's something specific that you want to know about, please put it in the comments down below. Maybe I'll make a video about it. Or we can chat about it in my weekly live chats on Tuesday at 12 p.m. EST. So thank you again for your time, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.